Project Scope Management Overview. In scope management, you probably already know we have six processes, and all of these six processes are different, but they're grouped into just two process groups. We have four in planning, and we have two in monitoring and controlling. Now, people often get those in planning mixed up and those in monitoring and controlling mixed up. So I want to talk about this very, very briefly just to put you on the right trajectory. And I also wanted to let you know that if this is something you're struggling with, there is help. We have a whole lot more instruction from where this is coming. So let's talk about the scope management processes very rapidly here. Project scope management has six processes and the first one is plan scope management. What is plan scope management? It is developing the scope management plan and the requirements management plan. Now right off the bat I want you to observe that these are different plans. There are six processes in scope. Now take away this one that I'm talking about, plan scope management. That leaves you with five. The scope management plan is used to guide five processes coming after plan scope management. But there is one process that uses a lot more of the other plan. And the process that uses more of the requirements management plan is known as collect requirements. That's the second process. So a lot of people often get the first process mixed up with the second and the third. Plan scope management is planning the how of scoping out the project. Planning the how of eliciting requirements. So you get your scope management plan your requirements management plan, and in this process of collect requirements, like I said, the plan that you focus heavily on is the requirements management plan. And this is where you collect all manner of requirements, technical, functional, business, project, and so on. And I prefer referring to this as an elicitation. A collection sounds a little bit aggressive, like you're almost about to jack someone up and get your money. Well, that's not really the spirit of requirement solicitation. So I like the word elicit, to draw out. That is a more palatable word. The next process is define scope. Defining all the work the project will entail. How do you know all the work the project will entail? Well, you need to know the requirements. If you don't know the requirements, how are you going to define the scope? You see, that is why collect requirements comes first. If someone says, I want orange and bouncy, well, what does it take to produce orange and bouncy? That may be different than what it takes to make red and flat. So orange and bouncy, as a requirement, gives birth to the work needed on the project. You know the work when you know the requirements. If you don't know the requirements, you don't know the work. Now, when we talk about defined scope, you need to remember that we talk about two types of scope here. In defined scope, we're talking about all the work that the project will entail. But I also want you to not lose sight of the fact that when we define scope, we also think not just about the project scope, but also the product scope. This is where we hammer down and narrow down on the features and the functions and the detailed deliverable description. Requirements are not a detailed description of the deliverable. Keep that in mind, okay? So define scope will give you a detailed deliverable description. Create WBS is the next process, and this is where we create a work breakdown structure for the project. And this is where all the work that needs to be done is put into a graphical hierarchical document. It is very important that you realize that some WBSs may not be visual. They're text-based, but they are hierarchical. That is the key thing. Whether it's boxes, 
whether it's text or something else. The hierarchy is what makes a WBS the WBS. So if you see a text-based WBS, don't be surprised. Now, to create the WBS, we take the scope statement and we work on it and breaking it down into more details in the WBS and polishing it up a little bit. So at the end of the day, what we really get out of Create WBS is a scope baseline that contains the WBS, the WBS dictionary, and the project scope statement. What do we have next? Next here we have validate scope. What is validate scope? This is where the customer reviews the deliverable. You could say that this is where the customer inspects the deliverable. Now, this is where it gets a little bit muddled up for some people. They think they're the ones doing the inspection. No, you're not. This is your customer. This is your stakeholder. This is your key stakeholder, the one the deliverable is for. Now, it's also worth noting that the customer could delegate the responsibility of inspecting of the deliverable to someone else. They could even delegate it to you and pay you for it. So the tables could be turned here in some of the questions. You need to be very careful when you're answering these validate scope questions versus control quality questions because if the customer has delegated responsibility to you to inspect a deliverable on their behalf, you own what is being done there. But the question would have to explicitly state, you're carrying out an inspection for a customer. You could be a third party. It doesn't mean you are the person creating the deliverable. So you've been hired to inspect a deliverable. Remember, you are acting on behalf of the customer. You'd need to read questions very carefully because stuff could be smuggled in there. After validate scope, the next thing listed is control scope. Control scope, the PM ensures only the work that is required is done. Only the work that is required is done. Only the work that is required is done. Someone says, Phil, but isn't that the same as validate scope? No. Validate scope is an inspection. Control scope is a check, like the plan do check, act cycle, you're checking to ensure that the work, not the deliverable, the work being done is indeed the work that should be done. And if anyone has deviated from that, you should investigate and correct as needed. All right, so I hope this helps you to better identify what exactly is happening in the area of scope. And if you are getting ready for the PMP exam and you do not have a solid course to help you. I need you to go to the website. Let me show it to you. www.praizion. You can see p-r-a-i-z-i-o-n.com. I'm going to show that to you on the screen. That is the website you need to go to right there. Go to the website and then when you scroll down a bit, you want to click on PMP Exam Prep Camp 2018. There is so much content in this course we have here for you. You need to go there and sign up. We've got all sorts of packages. And if you scroll down, you can see we've got a one week access all the way to a six months access. The cool thing about this course, though, is that not only do you have access to a plethora of training aids, and you can watch the video on that page, but you also are never left to your own devices because we have a Facebook group that you can join. We have ways that you can get answers to questions you have very speedily. We offer a lot of support to help you. So if you're trying to get certified, you know what to do. If you're puzzled, you're demystified, you're wondering how on earth you're going to do it, you need to go to the website right quick www.praizion.com. Thank you very much for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you, perhaps, on this training course for the PMP exam. Remember, if you're getting ready for the CAPM 
this course, this same course, is a great way for you to prepare as well. Take care, my friends. And remember, we have a webinar for those of you who really want to get certified. I'm bringing out two of my PMP gurus. We've got Nithya and Shante. They're going to be speaking to us on Saturday. You do not want to miss it. Look for my video yesterday and in the description, you'll find a link to sign up. Sign up and let's see you bright and early. It's at 10 a.m. Eastern tomorrow. See you and bye for now.